So here we are a year later with Bill Melvin, CEO of Buell Motorcycles. I just got back from the test ride. As you'll see in that test ride footage in just a minute, I was really happy to know that this is exactly what we all wanted it to be. Bill, you and the team have done an amazing job on these motorcycles. This is, this is what we're all trying to build and you've built it. It's what we all want. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So we're just going to build Absolutely. it for everybody. Yep. Yeah. So yeah. it's been highly customer focused, you know. This is what they want. We're going to give it to yeah, them. Yeah, yeah. And and you're the first manufacturer in my opinion that's doing that, you know. They other other brands will listen to the customer. You listened to the customer, you know, like, that's "Oh, this cool. is what you want." Okay, cool. That's what you got. So, I've been paying attention to the Instagram. I want to address a few things. Okay. So, I'm going to say what Bill probably can't say. It's unrealistic to expect this thing to not come with turn signals and to come with race exhaust and nowhere to mount your tag and all that kind of stuff. None of this stuff is hideous. I'll show some B-roll after this, you know, of the tag bracket and all this. I feel like you've done a really good job. Is this one EPA compliant? Is everything good to go or is there still some stuff to do to these? Uh, this one is the, the setup that would be EPA compliant. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we still have some testing and validation to do sure, before sure. it is EPA compliant, yep. but it is the setup that we feel has the durability, the performance, the high horsepower, the handling, the lean angle, the beautiful looks that would be EPA compliant. When you put the second exhaust on it, mm -hmm. we have a primary on the bottom, secondary on the side, that gives it California. Yep. And so all the bikes will come California compliant. Yeah, sure, right? sure. Uh, this one here has a race exhaust. It sounds badass. Uh, it does. I can attest to that. I was riding beside it. Slightly jealous, but... Uh, yeah, but, you know, that's that's how it'll roll out. Yeah, and, and, from and there, turn you, signals, you know, lighting, everything want. like that is, is good to go. Yeah. Okay, yep. cool. Yep. Yeah, I feel like all that looks good. And guys, come in here for just a second. I want to get on this bike and show you. These are the dimensions. It's completely normal. The photo that got put out was very unfortunate, but these are the dimensions. It's not short, it's not squatty. It's it's an amazing looking bike in my opinion. Oh yeah, that photo that went out was a little <laughs> stout. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Just yeah. the angle, you couldn't see the way the lighting and lines mm -hmm. came on the tank. You couldn't see the frame very right, well. We didn't, right. have, you know, it was, we just finished the bikes. We grabbed some photos. Put out a shot of the three of them. Yep. Put out that one. It looked a little stout, but when you see it. Yeah, yeah. You when know. you see it in person, and yep. I don't know how early this video is going to go out. They're at Destination Daytona. If you guys want to go see it, sit on it, check it out in person. I promise you, it looks good. It looks like the concept. It does. Yeah. It does. Yeah, my job, my focus the last year is making sure everything we do on this fits the look and dimensions of the concept bike. It's got the rake that you want that gives you good handling, but also just a great ride. Mm -hmm. And making sure that everything packaged in here just stays in line with the beautiful concept bike that Roland and his team built for us to make sure that when you're riding it, one, it's got the performance of a super bike, and two, it's got the styling of a, just a kick-ass cruiser. Yeah, right? yeah, absolutely. And, yeah. and to that point, I want to address a few things. You know, with that concept bike, I saw some comments about the radiator. There were some issues there that got worked out. If you want a gray radiator, you could make it gray. You know yeah. what I mean? Like that's yeah. that's not a big deal. Same thing with the exhaust. I've seen comments on the exhaust. Show me a motorcycle that you've bought from a dealership brand new that you haven't changed the exhaust on. It has to be compliant. And I feel this is not terrible yep. to me in any way, shape or form compared to what other people do. And again, we don't need to name names, but yeah. Off, off the showroom floor, that's a really good looking exhaust. Yeah, and the quickest way to get this bike into the market for all the riders is for us to go with the system that we already know is EPA and California compliant. Because yep. the engine, the muffler, and that whole package is, is a compliant system that we already have. So if we went and tried to reinvent that whole wheel, it would yeah. take another two years. Sure, Stick sure. with the system we got, package it in here, make it work. People can do whatever they want for if they're on the track or off-road or racing or stunning. They can do they can do their own exhaust systems, but we wanted to make sure we kept all that styling, kept all that look, and that's the quickest way to the market. Well, and not only the time, but the money. You know, that's yeah. R and D money that unfortunately does have to get passed along. You know, so yeah. if you guys want it, you know, priced the best it can, yeah. that's kind of where we're at. Yep. So last year we talked, we were talking roughly mid twenties, and yep. that kind of still what we're looking at right yep. now. It is. Yep, mid twenties. The bang for the buck is there. There's there's stock bikes that are in the mid twenties that are far, far, far from this. So 
if, if we can hit that price point, I think yeah. you're on to something, Bill. Thank you, man. Yeah, and some of the variance in that price point is suspensions, uh, stabilizers. Mm -hmm. You know, there's a few little things that are affecting where that price is going to finally land. Yep. But it's going to be packaged in the mid-20s. So do you plan to have any variations or no? It will just be one. So say I want a high-end suspension. I want this, this, and this. Yeah. Is there plans to I mean, offer that? You definitely can put an Olin's on it if sure. you want, right? Sure. So we're, we're figuring out if we're going to put Olin's on them, if we're going to put something else on them when mm -hmm. it comes rolling down the production yep. line. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's it's going to be packaged. It's going to be high performance. Either well, and way. let's address that because I know some people are going to be bummed. Oh, it might not come with Olin's. Look, I've I've talked with Bill long enough. I've been talking with Bill long enough. Whatever comes on this bike, I promise you, will be good. Even if it's not Olin's, I promise you, they're not going to tarnish their name, their reputation. Look at the heritage of the company. Look yep. what they're doing with their other bikes. They don't cheap out. They don't put bad stuff. Bill's a, a performance enthusiast himself. He's not going to build something he doesn't want to ride. That much I know. Yeah, it's going to have super bike performance and handling. Yep, there we yep. go. All right, right I think awesome. that's it. Thank you, Bill. Hey, that was a great time. Thank you, man. I It'll appreciate it. Yeah, time. absolutely. Yeah. All right, guys. So as things typically go when you get a badass opportunity, sometimes your equipment malfunctions. So this is not technically my first ride on the Buell. This is my second ride on the new Buell because I don't know what the camera captured on the first one. So we pulled over to turn around. So that works out fine. We're just gonna get out of here. But I'm gonna approach this as if I didn't record any of this. So first impressions on the Buell, uh, sitting on the bike feels absolutely amazing. Ergonomics are great. Foot controls are uh, like a slight rear set, but not all the way. Uh, my shifter's also adjusted a little low, so it's been kind of hard to catch gears. Nothing wrong with the bike at all, just a, a setup issue, personal preference type thing. Uh, one thing that I've really noticed that I like on this bike So one thing I've really noticed that I like on this bike is the gas tank. So it doesn't necessarily taper like super hard, but it's narrow enough that I can really squeeze this bike with my knees it's very good like when you're cornering just tuck in the seat keeps you really tucked in to like a good riding position as i mentioned you kind of got rear sets your bars are comfortable at this height for guys that just like to cruise but they're low enough and you know short enough and kind of just angled enough that it's kind of a, a racy feel Riding geometry and ergonomics on this new Super Cruiser, absolutely phenomenal. Like this is exactly what we all wanted out of this motorcycle, was an out of the box, super aggressive um, hooligan bike. That's literally what this is. This is a hooligan bike. This is, if you wanna cut up and act up and have a good time on your motorcycle, this is the bike that you can do it on. know if you will be able to see I'll probably <laughs> blur that out we'll say I was going to speed limit because we're clearly not on a closed course but we're going the speed limit and this bike had plenty left I mean plenty like it's it's almost scary to think about what this bike could actually do if you had a long straight road to to lay this thing out you'll notice it's got this smaller cowl fairing here uh, doing just enough like I'm not getting blasted with wind 
I'm not getting a lot of movement, you know, like buffeting in my helmet, but it is keeping a little bit off of my torso, which is what kind of makes you fatigued on longer rides. That's another question I have. How comfortable would this bike be on a longer ride? It feels very similar to my bike. Like if I sit up, you know, like straighten my back out, kind of relax, shake it all out, it feels very similar to my bike. I think the bars are about two inches lower and that's it. So I can see me being able to do all the same stuff that I do on mine. Uh, now, as these things are set up, there are no saddlebags or anything, no storage. So uh, I'll ask them about that. I'll do another interview with them uh, as soon as we get these things back and ask them some questions. And you may have actually already seen that. That will probably go before this. But at the time of me shooting that, that hasn't happened yet. So these are all questions I had that we probably already have the answers to. The best way I could summarize this and wrap this up for you guys is I promise you when I first started talking to Buell, you know, and we were talking about, you know, making content, doing stuff, you know, I was fortunate enough to be able to interview Bill, the CEO, who I'm currently riding with right now, which is also cool. How many times do you get to test ride a brand new bike, you know, a prototype bike, you know, production intent bike with the CEO of the company? Pretty cool. Um, so shout out to Bill for doing that. But I was able to interview him last year and uh, Jacob Stark, the head engineer for this project. There was a lot of hype, a lot of speculation around what this bike would be, how it would ride, you know, what its characteristics are. But when I talked to those guys the first time, I told them, I said, hey, like, I'm super excited about this bike. You know, I'm a fan of the brand X, Y, and Z, but have to you know keep my integrity i have to be honest i have to tell people like what my experience was like on this thing uh for for better or worse you know and they were completely fine with that so just know that you guys are getting my honest opinions you know not in cahoots with buell in any kind of way i am the first one to ride it which is pretty awesome, but there were no strings attached to that. And I promise you guys, I am hanging my reputation on this. This bike is everything that when you saw it, when you heard about it, uh, when you watched my video on it, it's exactly what you hoped it would be. Like this thing feels amazing. Um, unfortunately, we're in Florida. There's no such thing as curves here. So I'm not really getting to like toss it into a curve hard and stuff. But I've ridden enough motorcycles, you guys know that. I've ridden, you know, all the Harleys, ridden a bunch of custom stuff, ride a lot of off-road, uh, ridden a bunch of other brands, ridden a bunch of the Indian stuff, ridden sport bikes, ridden enough bikes to know this thing uh, is, is amazing in the curves. I don't need to do it to know. I would love to be able to do it, but I can just, it feels good. thing is this thing is a dream I can see the fairing does have a quick detach feature here which is really really nice um, again I probably already asked this it's been covered but you see Olin suspension Olin steering stabilizer so we'll see you know if that makes it So I can't help but wonder if anybody's noticing like wait are those are those new Buells just out here running around in the in the bad part of town in Florida <laughs> so we've actually brought these things off site uh, Buell is set up at Destination Daytona so depending on when you watch this video you may still get to go and check them out uh, at Destination Daytona but we brought them off site for this little project that we're doing.
Oh, another thing that I didn't talk about, um, brakes. Front brakes, absolutely amazing, as you would think, with that giant, giant rotor. Uh, rear brakes, really good, too. But front brakes are phenomenal, like super touchy. I don't think I got it on camera, but on the first ride, we were turning around in a little sandy spot. I grabbed a little too much and uh, almost <laughs> washed out. We'll see if that footage made it on the camera that I put on Bill's bike. Thank <laughs> you.